Hello there and welcome back guys. In today's video I will build these US soldiers from Masterbox for my M1 Abrams. Let's take a quick look at what's inside the box before I begin the construction. There is one sprue included. The details look very nice. A few parts need some cleaning up but the molding overall is very well done. There are lots of folds and small details on all parts that should allow you to create some interesting looking figures. Overall looks like a really good set. Ok, let's begin the construction. First I have to remove the parts with my side cutters. Every quarter on the sprue has parts for one of the four included figures. All parts are then carefully cleaned with my hobby knife and sandpaper if necessary. For some of the seam lines it's best to scrape the blade over the surface, slowly grinding down any extruding parts. Just be careful to not accidentally destroy any details. I then use Tamiya Extra Thin to glue the parts together. This glue melts some of the plastic. When I carefully press the parts together, the soft plastic fills the small gaps between the parts itself. A quick test to see if the figure can stand on its own. And it does. Next up are all the accessories. And let me tell you there are a lot of them for each figure. First the groin protection. Followed by various bags and ammo pouches. These are easiest to add with a pair of tweezers. Now comes the arm resting on set pouches. Since there are no individual steps in the instructions, I have to test myself to see in which order I have to attach all the parts. Each figure has its own equipment and gadgets, so now I have to repeat the process for the remaining three. I will keep the heads separate for now. This will make painting both the body and face easier, with less risk of anything going wrong. The heads have this large seam line in the middle. While the helmet should cover it, I remove it anyway just to make it safe. I could add the helmet now, but I will keep it separate as well for the same reason. Now I can begin painting. First a base layer of Vallejo's Mecha Primer Grey. This not only unifies the surface, but also shows any imperfections I have not seen yet. And then I was unsure about the next color. I didn't have the colors in the instructions and there were a lot to choose from online. In the end, I decided on these two colors for the digital camouflage. Grayish blue as the base and stone gray for the pattern. First I tried painting the base layer with a brush. But after about a minute I switched to applying this layer with an airbrush as well. The color is simply applied much more evenly and it is faster. To thin these Revell colors I used a few drops of Aqua Color Mix from Revell as well. Now comes the interesting part, which could either work really well or fail completely. The digital camo. The lighter grey is applied in a somewhat boxy pattern over the entire dark base layer. My goal is to create a pattern that looks similar to the real one from a distance. Close up it may look weird at first, but I have to trust the process. This step will take its time, so I suggest listening to a podcast or hear some music if you want to try this yourself. You could use some reference material if you like, if you are unsure about the ratio between the light and dark color.
And this is the camo for the first figure finished. This took about an hour and a half to complete. I would say it looks promising right now, but I have to wait until the end to see if I can achieve the effect I was hoping for. Next are the details. I am using a darker grey for the stripes on the vest and backpack, as well as all the details on the pouches. The knee pads are also darkened to give them some more contrast. I painted the gloves on this one black. Here I can add some visual interest by giving each soldier different colored ones. This will help to break up the otherwise plain grey surface and add a little bit of color to the figure. The boots are painted in Africa brown and leather brown. And this is how they look so far. I am pleasantly surprised with how well they already look. And now it's time for the faces. I began by adding a layer of brown sand. Not diluted, but carefully as to not cover any details on the face. To achieve a uniform color, I needed two layers. Now I am adding a thin wash of fire red. I make sure to only leave a very small amount behind, like a very thin glaze. This should add some life to the face. After letting it completely dry, I went back with yet another red wash. This time a heavier one made from red brown. And again I removed most of it to not overdo the effect. This one should accumulate in all the lower parts to give them some basic shadows. And after drying I have a hat with some simple color variation and shadows. After adding the shadows I have to add some highlights again. The first layer is made from the previous sand brown again. The highlights are added over all the raised parts like the ears, nose, cheekbones, upper lips and forehead. Now I am adding a little bit of flat flesh into the mix to lighten the color by a small amount. The lighter color is then applied to all the highlights I painted before, keeping the area smaller. The whole process is then repeated multiple times, each time making the color lighter with more flat flesh and covering a smaller area. Over several steps, this should result in a somewhat smooth gradient between dark and light. Do you think it worked? I think it looks alright, but I still have a lot to improve here. Next in line are the weapons. They are all covered in a base layer of Revelle's Aqua Color Black. I have to keep the paint very diluted to not cover any of those beautiful details. After letting them dry, I can take a graphite pencil and gently rub it over the weapons. This leaves a slight metallic shine behind and all the details become more visible again. I won't make the M14 black like the rest. Instead I gave it a camo pattern of brown and yellow tones, like the one on the box art. Last but not least I have to put all the pieces together. I use ultra glue for gluing because it dries without leaving any residue. I simply add a small amount to the palm of the hand and then gently press the gun into it. But for the head itself, I chose a different glue. If I remove the paint from the contact points, the Tamiya Extra Thin works again. I just have to work very carefully and not use too much. This should create a stronger and quicker bond than the Ultra Glue. 
For the head I switched the glue back and added a big blob on top. Then I gently put the helmet in position and let the glue harden. If you look at them from a distance, they definitely have the effect I was going for. And that's it for these figures. I still have to improve my face painting, but I can only do that by keep painting figures. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss any future uploads. I would greatly appreciate that. If you have any feedback or suggestions, let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.